Okay, so basically we're kind of we've kind of been talking about just like different problems at OU and colleges and everything. And um one problem has been like some students um I've talked to and just maybe even heard about articles online or my classmates, you know, have problems with advising, whether it's like miscommunications with their advisor, maybe have an advisor that doesn't match up as well with them. So that's kind of what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So for my first question, you know, um, there's been a few students, you know, I've talked to who maybe feel like they've been misadvised with like classes to take and everything. So if you've had any experience with that, you know, do you have any perspective on that or any experience dealing with issues like that with students? Yeah, so um, of course there's going to be issues of misadvice. That's, that is the nature of um, kind of this career field that, you know, everyone makes a mistake, of course. Here at, um, o I can only speak for here at OCCC, at OCCC, we have 88 different programs. And our advisors have to learn all of the ins and outs of each program, right? So especially when someone is new, and you know, still learning the ropes, I would say. Um, sometimes there's an easy, you know, cross-reference or miscommunication made about um, maybe what the student is wishing for. So I think that is really when mistakes come to fruition is when a student has shared that they want to do this major, let's just say nursing, okay? And then the advisor is like, okay, well, for nursing, we need this, this, and this. Well, along the way, maybe a couple semesters down the road, Students like, I don't want to do nursing anymore. It's not going to work for me. And so they've taken classes for nursing that not necessarily may work for other things. Um, and so they're like, well, I wish you would have told me two semesters ago that I didn't need to take this if I wasn't going to do nursing, but we thought they were doing it. So I think that there's always going to be two sides to every story, right? So an advisor may feel that they're preparing the student off of the information that they have, but that student may have some additional information that they haven't shared. Um, and then there are going to be the straight mistakes um, where a, a class code is entered correctly or um, someone is told to take a English 2 class when they've already had English 2 two colleges ago and they didn't have the transcript in front of them and they missed it. Um, and so it's just a matter of um, everyone makes mistakes. No one is perfect. Um, I would never say my advisors are 100% all the time. They do their very best. Um, but there are mistakes made. What I like to do is when something like that happens, we own it. We say, I am so sorry um, that I made that mistake. And I apologize if this has caused any inconvenience. And then we do our best to fix it, whether that's a credit for tuition hours. Like maybe if they took a class that they didn't need to take, um, we give them a credit back for those tuition hours so that they can take another class that they do need um, at no cost. Or if we're in the middle of it and we catch it, we can go back, drop them out with no penalty. You know, we try to do our best to fix it for the student and, and meet the student where they are. But yeah, no one is perfect. So unfortunately, mistakes do happen. Anyone who says advisors do not make mistakes, that's not accurate. We, you know, we all make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Right, totally. And then I'm sorry, I forgot to start with this, but if you just want to state your first, last name and title, just- Oh yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank my you. Is, yeah, my name's Stephanie Miller and I'm the director of education. Perfect. Thank you. And then kind of going off of all that, um, if I know this has, you know, happened a few times, like I've had friends even that have felt like maybe they don't match up super well with their advisor, they're not getting what they need from their advisor, or maybe just, they just feel like they're not meshing well with them. Are there any like ways that students could switch advisors if needed or any practices in place when issues like that arise where they just feel like they're not a good fit? Yeah, so um, we base our assignments for advisors off of divisions here. So, for instance, um, we have advisors in the business and IT divisions. So if you're an accounting major, you're going to be with one of those advisors. If you're a nursing major, you'll be with a health professions advisor. Um, yeah, sometimes there's personality differences, or maybe they um, feel like that person doesn't spend enough time or spends too much time. There could be a lot of different things. But what we really try to do is hone in on what about the experience didn't meet your needs and then maybe talk to the advisor. I don't like to switch advisors um, for students if they've already started to build a relationship. Now, if there's a clash or if something has happened, each situation is unique. And so I would encourage them to first talk to the advisor, 
So for instance, if they're not feeling like they're getting what they need, first try and talk to the advisor and say, hey, I just want to bring this to your attention. I would have rather that this meeting went like this. I, I feel like something was missing. And try it that way. And then maybe they could try to make some adjustments, the advisor. And I think that our advisors are always going to try that. Um, and then if that doesn't work, then of course you can send a request or email or meet with the director of the advising office there and just share your concern. I think everybody has different opinions on how to handle things like that. For me, I try to meet the student where they are. So if the student is sharing with me, like, I've tried this, I've tried that, it's not working. Um, I'd like to meet with someone different. A lot of times what I'll end up doing is I'll start meeting with the student, you know, and they can start meeting with me. Um, and then a lot of times they'll have someone else in mind. Like they've been with their sister when they've met with their advisor and they really like that person. So they'd like to meet with that advisor. Um, and so we've made adjustments like that on occasion. All right. And then I was talking to, I believe the she was the associate provost of um, advising at OU. And she said something that I thought was like super interesting and true, honestly. She said that, you know, it shouldn't, shouldn't be like, student just listening to the advisor or the advisor just like kind of doing everything the student says it's more of a partnership so do you have like any input on that and you know just kind of how how you hope at least at OCCC for the partnership and relationship between an advisor and student to go if that makes sense. Yes so we call it student success advising here and so we're at a real holistic approach meaning that should be your person you know here on campus and so we want them to have a good relationship but going back to one of the first questions you asked about mistakes and advising, um, it has to be a two-way street, right? So for instance, the communication, the information. If we ask you, have you taken classes at another school and you don't tell us that you have and then we end up finding out that you did. So yes, the communication has to be there on both sides. And I think, yes, it's a partnership, but also the open communication and open and honest communication on both sides is very, very, very important. And that's key to a successful advisor relationship because um, if the student isn't sharing that they're maybe struggling in their math class, right? And then we get to the end of the semester and they have enough, but they never said a word, even though they've met with their advisor three times, we had all these resources we could have shared, you know, with the student to help them. And unfortunately we didn't know they were struggling. So I think that that's like a really big part is the open communication, making sure that you're comfortable and that goes back to your second question, which is, what if I don't like my advisor and I don't want to talk to them? Mm -hmm. Then it's important that you are comfortable and are communicating well with the advisor. Right, for sure. And then kind of my last question is just like, do you have any advice you would give to students who may feel like they're struggling with their advisors and kind of any advice to students in general for their advising and, you know, what, what they should do, what students should be doing to make sure that they're getting everything they need from their advisor? Absolutely. So I would say for me, um, the biggest thing that they need to be doing is speaking up for themselves, communicating, asking questions. Um, I think that, you know, the, in college period, I think a lot of times what ends up happening with students is they're nervous and they're scared. They're, it's all new. Um, but in college, advocate you have to advocate for yourself right so you have to be your own best advocate so asking questions educating yourself maybe you're not comfortable asking anybody in the advising office ask your friend ask people that you're in class with you know who do you have as an advisor what was your experience well that's not my experience and that's interesting like compiling information and then with that information you're armed to go back and talk to the someone in the advising office um you can also reach out to your faculty you know, or vice versa. Like if you're not comfortable reaching out to your faculty, reach out to your advisor. You know, office hours should be your best friend um, with your faculty. So I think that, again, being at college is a responsibility for each student, right? And so you have to own some of that responsibility and own some of that requirement to communicate, ask questions, get yourself educated on things that are going on. Um, and that would be my biggest, biggest piece of advice is that speak up for yourself. Um, the communication part of it is so key. And so um, the more questions you ask, the more information you arm yourself with, the better prepared you're going to be to be successful. Right, for sure. I agree. And then, well, if there's just anything else you want to add, anything I didn't ask that you think is important, go right ahead. Yeah, um, I just think that it's also important um, 
as an advisor, as being an advisor, I was an advisor at Added OD for a really long time um, before I moved into the assistant director job there and then moved here. And I just think that it's important for students to show grace um, to the advisors. Um, the advising profession is a very under, underthinked population. Um, and so they do their best. They do it, they have to learn so many things and know so many things about all the different programs. And so I just think to give some grace and patience, um, you know, and if they are communicating with you, just try to keep building that relationship. So just keeping those lines of communication open, I would say is the biggest piece of advice I can give. Yeah, right. Yeah. I think I've learned a lot like talking to people, like talking to advisors, because there's so many things that advisors do that I didn't think about. And, you know, I think I didn't even realize until I've been talking to people that there are like, you know, direct like other positions besides just the advisor, like the of like it's kind of silly that I didn't think about that before. But you know, there's the directors of advice, you know, have to oversee all these issues and just everything. So we really do appreciate you guys. Oh, thank you so much. I, I think that most students are very, very, you know, um, they understand, right? But a lot of times, um, you know, we could tell someone something, you know, two or three times, and it maybe just takes a different person saying it for it to like click. You know how sometimes just comprehension is how it's communicated, right? And so maybe finding that like we're talking about like I don't mesh well with the advisor, and that's just maybe because of a difference in communication style, right? So finding the person that you can openly communicate with is going to be key to your success. Oh, for sure. Well, I think that's all I have. But again, I just want to say thanks so much for talking to me. I really appreciate it. You've been a big help, and thank you so much. No problem. No problem. I hope you have a great rest of your semester. Thank you. You too. Have a great day. All right. Bye bye.